You know, I think a lot of people have that one game that's haunted them over the years. Maybe it's more than just one, but it's the game that hovers over your head. You see it all over the place online, you're always hearing people praise it. You think to yourself, it can't be that good, right? But you're curious all the same. It might be a one-off, it might be a small piece of a larger franchise, but the curiosity remains. I gotta find out what this is all about. That's me and Xenoblade Chronicles. It started off as this kind of, if you know, you know type game when it first came out on Wii in 2012 in North America, but fantastic word of mouth made its popularity seemingly spread like wildfire. It felt like anyone who knew anything about RPGs was praising this game to the moon and back, but I never quite understood the appeal. Even now, my only personal exposure to Xenoblade Chronicles is whenever I spam Shulk's side taunt Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm really feeling it! I'm really feeling it! I'm really feeling it! Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out in 2017 but many like myself wanted to experience the first game first, but never got to, even though it was ported to the new 3DS and on the Wii U eShop. Before that though, it was pretty hard to find on its original hardware. Even then, it's not like everyone and their grandma has a 3DS and a Wii U lying around. Is it just me, or is it after the Switch came out, it's like if a game wasn't on Switch, it's like it never existed at all. Just disappeared off the face of the earth. Anyway, I know Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is right there, but I'm the kind of person who needs to play games in chronological order. And I know too, isn't super related to the first game and there's still all the other games under the Xeno Saga umbrella, but eh, it's a me thing, all right? But I can't be the only person who sees a game with a two at the end of it and thinks, ooh, but I haven't played the one without the two at the end of it. So all jokes and personal asides aside, here's what you need to know about the upcoming Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. And mind you, I haven't played the original yet, but I want to, so forgive me if I get some minor details wrong. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is a real-time action JRPG following the story of a young man named Shulk who wields a sword called the Minato that can see into the future. He and his friends travel across vast open lands that are actually all on two giant titans who are frozen in place. I actually really love the idea of an entire game taking place on two giant creatures because it opens up a ton of opportunities to really ooh and awe at the environment. It's kind of like how in Star Wars pretty much everything you see on the Wookiee planet Kashyyyk is actually on the planet's treetops including the oceans and whatnot. Pretty sure that's how it is. Is. Could be wrong. Anyway, just had to throw some Star Wars in there, you know how it is. Getting back to the whole environment aspect of Xenoblade Chronicles, that's one of the biggest reasons I'm excited for the Definitive Edition on Switch. A good RPG will transcend any kind of visual style, but let's be honest, the Wii was not a console with a lot of lookers on it. It seemed kind of like antithetical in a way for a big open world RPG to take place on a console that didn't even have an HDMI port. The Wii did its best, but... You know. The phrase Definitive Edition has been thrown around so much it's almost lost all meaning to me, but I really do think this version of Xenoblade Chronicles is the definitive way to play. It seems like the version that Monolith Soft, the developers, wanted us to see all this time. To draw another comparison, I remember when I played the Shadow of the Colossus remake on PS4 a while back, and it had a deeply profound effect on me that it normally wouldn't have had if I had been playing the original PS2 version. I know graphics aren't everything, but they definitely make it easier to stop and smell the roses every now and then, which is a huge part of the appeal of open environments like the ones found in Xenoblade Chronicles. Okay, so it looks nicer. What else do you have for me though? The controls have been updated, the menus and user interfaces have been completely reworked, making it easier to navigate through the game's menus. Over 90 music tracks have been remixed and remastered, so it'll sound even better than it already does. But I think the thing that'll entice people who have already played the game is a brand new epilogue to the game called Future Connected. So even if you've already played the game on the Wii or 3DS, there's still a big, big reason to come back for more. This isn't just a basic remaster or a port, they're adding to the game people already know and love. The nice thing is that there's already Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and its acclaimed standalone expansion, Torna the Golden Country, to try out if you're on the fence. I think Torna might actually be the best place to start if you're unsure about it all. Torna is a prequel to 2, it's not full priced, you can play it even if you don't own the full game. I might actually do that now that I think about it, sounds like a good idea. So if you're interested in Xenoblade Chronicles, you want the game but you don't know if you'll like it, check out Torna, I recommend that. But the truth is though, that I don't really understand what makes Xenoblade Chronicles special, yet. All I have is morbid curiosity and the positive word of mouth from my friends and peers. Will I fall in love with the combat, the story, the characters? I don't know yet. But I'm looking forward to finding the answer, and I'm looking forward to finding the answer with everyone else hopping into Xenoblade Chronicles for the first time with the Definitive Edition. I'm really feeling it! I'm really 